Hey Tim, I'm on the iPadOS team and I was hoping we could give it some productivity apps like Final Cut, Logic, and the calculator. We appreciate your ideas, Glenn, but unfortunately, we're just gonna leave the pro workflows for the Mac line. If you want Mac features, you just gotta buy a Mac. Oh, really? Okay, well, that's that's a shame. I, think, I guess people will just have to keep buying Macs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's right, Glenn. Thanks, Glenn. Anyway, Derek, how is development on the iPad hardware coming along? Oh, man, Tim, it's amazing! We just came up with the fastest silicon apples ever made! Wow. That's amazing. I know Steve really wanted the iPad to stay at around 10 inches, but do you mind if we make, like, a 13-inch version? Of course! Go on right ahead! Oh, awesome. Thanks, Tim. Also, is it okay if we bring USB-C to the iPad as well? By all means, go Go ahead, go for it. Awesome, Tim, thank you, I appreciate that. Also, could we start selling keyboards that go along with the iPad as well? I see no hypocritical reason not to, so I guess go ahead. That's dope, man, thank you. Also, does it matter if there's a trackpad on those keyboards so we could give the iPad official mouse support? Oh yeah, we love our trackpads. Of course, give them to the iPad as well. Awesome, Tim, thank you. How about mini LED and maybe uh, Thunderbolt ports while we're at it? Thunderbolt ports? are very capable, I guess so. Go ahead, put it on the iPad. Awesome, awesome. And how about like the M1 chip? You know, that's gotten so fast. Could we bring like 16 gigs of RAM and two terabytes of storage to the iPads as well? That's a lot of storage. I hope they keep paying for iCloud, but yeah, absolutely. Add all the M1 chips you want. Thanks, Tim. That's awesome. I can't wait to keep adding more and more Apple Silicon. Hold on a second. Aren't you adding a bunch of Mac features to the iPad every year anyway? Why is it such a stretch to bring some pro apps over from the Mac or just Mac OS entirely? Oh, dude. <laughs> Mac OS is for Macs. Just shut up. That just wouldn't be logical. I don't think those products go together. If you want a Mac, you just gotta buy a Mac. Let's begin. I was pretty dang confused when I saw Apple file this patent with the US Patent Office because I basically think Apple has already developed this type of thing, but you guys know how I feel about the iPad. I just think that there's no Apple product out there where the software is just fundamentally limiting what the hardware is capable of so drastically that it makes like so much of the product insanely overkill to the point where we're not just talking about overhead and planning for the future anymore, it's just downright obnoxious and insane to start shipping this kind of silicon in ports this powerful like Thunderbolt when your files app can't even handle files after a certain gigabyte limit and yet you're selling and shipping iPads with two terabytes of storage. It's ridiculous. And for the record, I'm not saying you should stop putting that pro hardware in there. It's great that iPads can't have two terabytes of storage or 16 gigs of RAM or Thunderbolt. It's just if you're gonna go overkill with the hardware, that software needs to catch up. You gotta start adding in and enabling more features features with the software to take advantage of that hardware. And I feel like the iPad basically has everything it needs to run Mac OS, or at least Mac applications that have not been brought over yet and yet could easily run on Apple Silicon. We know they can for a fact. So is Apple actually going to listen to our requests and give us pro apps or more pro workflows with iPad OS 16? Probably not. However, here's this patent that Apple wants to start designing a keyboard and trackpad accessory for the iPad with a new proprietary connector and some kind of magnetic slash specialized port at the bottom of your iPad that will dock to this additional keyboard and trackpad and that would give you a Mac-like experience I guess because this is supposed to be more than just you know a magic keyboard case or a smart folio cover. This is meant to give you I guess additional battery life and in order to truly experience a Mac OS functionality I guess you have to have some kind of aluminum surrounding your keyboard for some reason. I don't get what the big difference is between just Apple having a magic keyboard case and then just running the entire OS off of the iPad itself. Why do you need like a giant Mac board essentially where you have like a sawed off version of a MacBook with a battery and maybe some more silicon in there or something or additional ports and then you dock your iPad with that in order to have this like hybrid device like a two-in-one product that's both an iPad and a Mac. It's important to remember that a lot of these patents usually 
probably never end up seeing the light of day anyway. So even if this type of product sounds cool to you, like Apple's version of like an old Surface book, where you could just have a regular Mac with a keyboard and trackpad, but also when you feel like it, just freaking rip the display off of the MacBook and boom, now it turns into an iPad OS device. And you could theoretically have one device that's capable of doing all these things. But perhaps this is Apple's way of not giving in to our demands, you know, because it's just too simple to add pro apps to the iPad or to add Mac OS to the iPad. No, 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 because that goes against our ethos of what an iPad should be. An iPad fundamentally from the ground up needs to be just a blown up iPhone that doesn't do much more than an iPhone does. In fact, while you gain split view multitasking and Apple Pencil support, you lose a calculator, you lose weather, you lose optimized battery charging, you lose all of these basic things basically that an iPhone can do. But because it's bigger and because it's an iPad, even though it has faster silicon and better ports and all that, yeah, it just can't fundamentally do some of the things the iPhone is supposed to do. So Apple finds a workaround. Like it's not even really a shortcut. It's more of like a long cut where the iPad hardware team has to work directly with the Mac team in order to make this bizarre middle ground product that is somehow combining a lot of Mac hardware where it gives you a keyboard and trackpad and maybe some additional ports with this weird proprietary connector that you dock your future iPads with. So if this patent does come true, by the way, it would not work with any of our existing iPads. This would require additional hardware and some kind of proprietary connection and maybe special magnets in order to get the iPad to dock with this keyboard accessory. And then once you buy this super expensive iPad accessory, now you can unlock a true two-in-one device from Apple that's capable of doing everything an iPad can and everything a Mac can. Maybe the theory is that by iPads getting too good, they're going to cannibalize Mac sales, even though in my head that makes no sense, because if you try to spec for spec match a MacBook Air with an iPad, it costs like $500, $600 more. So even if iPads were cannibalizing Macs, they would be selling at much higher volume, so it's fine. But okay, let's just say that's Apple's logic, is that they're worried about product cannibalization. So they decide if we do make a hybrid two-in-one device, we have to sell an additional accessory for the iPad that's so absurdly expensive that very few people will justify doing it. So you gotta spend, you know, a thousand to two thousand dollars on your pro iPad and then another five hundred or six hundred dollars on this stupid keyboard docking case, which hopefully has a rubber seal around the unibody because all iPads are lacking that rubber seal that your MacBook has so that the glass in the display doesn't scratch up or get banged up on the keys when it folds downward. So this would just be a weird product, a weird accessory that Apple could charge a lot for and say, okay, if you buy this accessory, then your iPad can technically boot into Mac OS mode and you'll have a Mac slash iPad device. I don't know what they would call it, a iPad Mac or a Mac Pad or a Maxi, yeah, you get the point. And similar to Microsoft Surface two-in-one devices, it would likely be very expensive and the specs would not be as good as just buying a dedicated MacBook Pro or a dedicated MacBook Air. But for the people out there that are in dire need and really, really just wanted one product that was capable of doing the tasks of both, they would technically have a solution, even if it's really expensive and not that great of value. I mean, as disappointing as this sounds, and I think it would be much easier to just, you know, bring a dual boot feature or bring pro apps to iPadOS, I at least appreciate that Apple seems to be at least thinking about this. It's not the correct way of going about it, but at least there seems to be some talk or some R&D going on about making a two-in-one product, and maybe that means in the future Apple will make something capable of doing everything an iPad can, so you can have Face ID, so you can have Apple Pencil support, so you can have cellular, and still have the same device do everything your Mac does, which could be Xcode, could be Logic, could be Final Cut, could be live streaming with external webcam support, and a more appropriate file management system in place, and that type of thing. I could see myself buying something like that in the future, even if it was really expensive, just because I don't want to carry around two devices everywhere I go. But at the end of the day, I think Apple still just wants all of us to buy an iPad and a Mac because they are convinced we'll make more money from them that way. When in reality, I think it just results in less people buying iPads. Like, if there's so little changes with iPadOS year after year, then people will just buy their iPad Air or buy their iPad Pro once, hold on to it for seven, eight, nine years, depending on how many updates it gets, and they just see no reason 
upgrading because there's nothing in the software that can take advantage of the better hardware coming out with iPads rocking M1 chips and Thunderbolt ports and later this year we'll probably get an iPad Pro with an M2 chip but the number of people that can justify that insanely low when iPad OS is as limited as it currently is. What do you guys think? Should Apple just keep doing what they're doing and not let the products touch each other at all or should they do what I suggest which is just allow an optional dual boot even if you want to restrict it to just the Pro iPads that's fine just as long as there's some way no matter how expensive it is to make an iPad start running Mac OS you know once it has a keyboard and mouse connected if it has available storage to support it or do you like this patent idea where Apple makes some kind of hybrid device where you have to buy an expensive accessory with the iPad and then you have a fully fledged MacBook when the accessory is attached and then you just rip the display off when you want to enter iPad mode all those crazy ideas let me know what you're thinking down below and hopefully this topic can get some light shed on it because Apple should know there's demand for a product like this and in the Steve Jobs days he knew that the iPhone was going to cannibalize the iPod line but he did not care because Apple was comfortable making products that replaced lots of devices a phone an iPod and a breakthrough internet communication device because they knew those devices were influential and ended up selling really really well even though they costed more than the devices they were replacing same thing I think could apply to the Mac pad or whatever combination of names you guys want to call it this is your Apple sheep here I'll see you all in the next one